Yo, what's up? It's Patrick from Guy in the Cube. And in this video, I'm gonna convert a flat file to a full data model using Power BI Desktop. Stay tuned. Okay, so converting a flat file to a data model? Why? Well, you ever open up a pivot table or a Power BI desktop file and you have this long list of columns and it's just complete chaos. How do I know what to do? How do I know which column I need, right? There's no, there's no organization to it. And so I've seen this a lot out in the wild and I just wanted to step back, kind of go back to the basics and show you how to take this flat file that maybe you requested it from IT and they just send you this CSV file or this Excel file with all these columns. You just load it up and you start building your reports. But whenever I create something in Power BI, I'm thinking about self-service. I want somebody to use this. I want somebody to build their own reports because I hate creating reports. Just kidding, just kidding. I kid, I kid, I kid. But right when I do create reports, I want to easily go after the columns that I want to create. Um, I want to easily find them and then start building my reports quickly as opposed to searching through this very long list of columns. Understand what I'm saying? Long list, don't want the long list. Want to bring a little structure to it. So you guys know how I like to do, right? Instead of all this talking, let's head over to my laptop. Okay, so the first thing I'm gonna do is I've, I've reached out to IT and I asked them, hey, I need some sales data. And of course they send me a nice little flat file. So I'm gonna go get my little CSV file. So I'm gonna choose CSV and browse to where they save that CSV file for me. Click open. After I click open, Power BI is gonna do this phenomenal thing here. Um, get the data for me and I'm gonna click edit. Don't just click load. Don't just click load. Click edit, because we're gonna massage it, we're gonna shape it. We're gonna get intimate with the data, all right? So we go ahead and click edit. Let's see here, query editor will open. And the first thing I do when it loads up is I go after the columns that I don't want. I remove them, let's clean this guy up. I will admit, my, this flat file was a little oversimplified and you may need to do some things, you know, you may need to do, take a little more action, right? Get, become a little more intimate with your data to kind of identify your primary keys for your queries and things like that. Mine is somewhat simplified, but the first step is I go and look for the columns I need to remove. And so you may need to, you know, you may have to pick and choose and go through this. A great way to do it is to go to choose columns and just uncheck the ones you want, you know, like that. Or if they're in order, my mind just happened to be in order, you can click the first one, go all the way to the end, press down shift, and just select remove column. So I don't need any of those. I knew that, right? I knew that before, right? It's like a cooking show. I kind of prepared for this, right? Then the next thing you want to do is, right, I really spend some time looking at this data, trying to figure out how's my data model going to look. You know, what's gonna be like, where's my additive value is gonna be? Kind of like a fact table in a data warehouse, if you're familiar with that concept. And then I look for how I'm gonna aggregate or group my data. Like for an example, in this data, I have product. I see there's a product key and there's also a sales territory key somewhere in here. Um, I remember, sometimes I head over to my whiteboard and I actually kind of architect the model out or I grab a piece of paper or I use my, my wonderful Surface Book with its inking capabilities to draw that out. Either way, right, I identify what I need and then I'll go ahead and duplicate the query a couple of times. So we're gonna do that a couple of times. Don't worry, I'm not bloating it out because when I click close and apply, the only data that's gonna be loaded is the data that's left um, in the query editor. So for this one, for my sales, I'm gonna go ahead and call this my, um, my sales orders. Right, that's my sales orders. That's where all my sales is gonna happen. And what I'm gonna do is kind of clean it up. The only thing I really need are the keys that I'm gonna relate to those other queries that I'm gonna create from the duplication of that, the initial query. So I'm gonna go ahead and remove everything you know, that's not necessary. So like all this product detail stuff, right? I'm gonna remove that. And then from the sales territory, all I need is the key. So I'm gonna remove all of that stuff. Also, right? So all I need is this, the keys from each one. So go ahead and remove that. So now I'm left with just my additive values and my date and then my keys to the other queries. And then I'm gonna come here and this is gonna become my product query, right? And so what I'm gonna do is, I like this a lot, I'm going to select just the product stuff. I think that's all I need. 
in Power Query or the Query Editor has a great feature where you can say remove other columns. For some of you, this may be you know, a rehash of something that you've done before. It's like, oh, Patrick, this is so simple, but I'm taking it back to the basics because I want people to understand that you don't need you know, some formalized data warehouse process to have a nice data model in Power BI. You can use the Query Editor to create your own uh, data model, all right? So now I have this. I'm gonna go ahead and call that to my product. Then I'm gonna repeat the exact same steps over here. I'm gonna call this my sales territory, all right? And then I'm going to remove everything but my sales territory stuff. Hey, right. and I need to, ah, there's a couple of things out here on the end that I need to remove too. And I'll have to repeat that over on the other one. That's all right. Yep. And go here. Perfect. And so I forgot a step. And so the next thing you want to do, you want to ensure that those you know, what you're gonna group or aggregate by, in my case, product and sales territory, they're unique. It's a unique listing of each row in these queries. So I'm gonna select all the columns, right click and remove duplicates. So that gives me a distinct list and repeat the exact same steps for my sales territory, move duplicates. So now I have a distinct list of everything I need. This is great, this is perfect. Now I have a nice, I have my orders where all my additive values are, and I have my two dimensions, right? If, again, if you're familiar with data warehousing terminology, I have these two tables, that's what I'm gonna aggregate all this stuff by, right? So now I'm gonna go ahead and click close and apply. This is where the magic happens, right? It's taking all my data, building you know, the semantic layer, writing it to memory, and then it's actually gonna create this wonderful data model for me. I'm so excited. I'm actually starting to perspire a little bit, okay? So if you click on relationships, you can see um, what Power BI has done is it's detected those key columns because they have the same name and they're the same data type. And it's established those relationships for me. So you now you can, you can see the formation, right? The formation of this nice clean data model from this little baby flat file. Well, not a little baby flat file, a ginormous flat file. So instead of scrolling up and down that field list, looking for columns, I've kind of grouped them together in queries. So now it's easy for me or whoever I decide to share this model with, they can you know, easily go, hey, the product information's in the product table, the sales territory, sales, territory, sales territory stuff is in the sales territory table, right? And if I want to, um, I can add another table. So I'm gonna do this just because I wanna do it, right? I'm gonna create another table here. Oh, not this way, oh, that's old school, right? I'm gonna use uh, modeling and say new table. And what I can do here is I'm gonna call this my date. My date table a equals, and I'm gonna press shift enter to give me a little space in my, uh, I'm gonna do var my calendar, right? Equals to calendar auto. Go check out what calendar auto does. I think Adam has a video on what calendar auto does, right? Uh -huh. Press return and then shift enter. And what I'm gonna do right here is say, uh, at columns, then I'm gonna use my calendar, and then I'm gonna say, uh, this is gonna be my year, right? There's a column that's already created out there for me. It's gonna be my month sort, right? And I'm gonna say month, and then finally, I'm gonna go ahead and add, you know, month name. And then I'm gonna say format. Right, you guys know what I'm doing. Everybody, you guys know this. This is a piece of cake. Um, and I'm gonna give me a couple of M's here. And finally, there's my, you know, my month table. And then I go over to my relationships and I'm gonna establish a relationship between date and order date. And then I'm gonna do one final thing over here is mark this as a date table. Just give me a second, select my date column. And now I have a full data model where I can start doing, you know, my reporting from. If it's me, right, if, if I'm building this, I'm actually going to take this, publish it up to PowerBI.com, pu publish my data model to PowerBI.com, and then open up another version of PowerBI Desktop and choose Get My PowerBI Dataset and use this 
right here is my data model. So if I have to make any changes, whatever, I make changes to this one. And then I use Power BI and another, you know, another instance of it running purely as a visualization tool. So I separate the data modeling and the visualizations. I hope that makes sense, right? If not, I have a video um, on data silos where you can go and check it out where I kind of dig into that a little more, all right? And so you can start building your reports and doing everything you want against this nice, clean, pretty data model, all right? How are you guys doing it today for you guys that don't have data warehouses? Are you leveraging this? Are you taking a different approach? Are you doing some of it in DAX? I'd like to know, right? Post it in the comments below. If this is your first time visiting the Guy in the Cube channel, go ahead and subscribe. If you like my video, give me two big thumbs up. As always, from Adam and Patrick, thanks for watching. We'll see you in the next video. Boom, boom, boom.